Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Renu. For those who are visiting for the first time, I'm covering a lot of information on Federal Skill Worker Program TR to PR Pathway, PNP, and then CEC. Moving on to our first update over here, I'm going to quickly cover on exactly what the backlog is and uh, how the Canadian government is going to deal with it. So there's little news, which is just a couple of minutes ago, I'll be covering towards the very end that how Immigration Minister is insisting that he's going to uh, you know, hire more staff members or digitize the operations just to make sure that the number what they are looking at is going to get achieved. Let me remind you that, you know, in 2021, under the supervision of this new immigration minister, Sean Fraser, I'm really happy he, he became the minister. Reason being is that even during the time of COVID elections and whatnot, he was able to achieve the target. So this is really a good thing in the history of immigration. Uh, I, I love the fact. And moving on to <clears throat> another update under this, which actually I've announced through my channel on February 14th, your Valentine Day. So it was 431,645. This is exactly what he's looking at. Let me clarify a few of your doubts. There is no uh, TR to PR program going to happen again. This was magical and this, this TR to PR pathway was introduced during a different time when traveling was banned. There was no other way to achieve the target. So you can see the method, the the planning was amazing and this was one of the easiest immigration programs ever in the history of Canada. People have been taking like more than four years in getting the PR but in this case it, it just you know matter of time. Even in eight months time period you guys got PR card and still I've seen a lot of you are skeptic, confused but uh, guys this is one of the best program and you will get through by 2022. That's what the government is saying and they are indicating Remaining one, like 30,000 or whatever, I'm just going to cover it in the second slide over here. You will be get through by 2023. It doesn't mean that in case if you have applied, maybe like uh, towards the uh, time of July under stream B, you will get through in 2023. So this is not exactly the same scenario. We cannot be definitive about this number, uh, you know, based upon what's going on. They have really revamped the whole process. The processing time has been like amazing. You, like within two to three weeks time period, people are getting PR card from the stage of ECOPR, which is supposed to be done within four to six weeks time period. So yeah, and if you go back to the news of what uh, immigration minister has indicated that uh, he's pointing out that he's going to hire more staff, he's going to increase the speed of intake. So yeah, we can definitely get good results out here. Not to forget about 76,000 the candidates under federal skill worker program so yeah the, there is a probability that the draw thing which is going to happen maybe by mid of 2022 but hey we cannot guarantee anything that's what immigration department is indicating right now now let's quickly jump on to our you know highlights what we have covered day before so this is exactly the number they are looking at the tr to pr pathway so ircc is actually looking uh, to land 40,000 immigrants in 2022. When we say land, it doesn't mean that, that you have to get it from uh, India or from China or, or from various country. It could be even for those applicants who are physically present in Canada. And 40,000 is in 2022 and then 32,000 in 2023. Uh, around 20,000 plus was actually, uh, you know, like rolled out has happened but till December 2021 but again nobody knows exactly what the number game is going on right now so I'll be covering towards the very end all these highlights so let's quickly jump on to our first timeline so a lot of you actually started getting a TFN number so which is a good sign if you're getting a temporary file number this is an acknowledgement that your file is on system now and any time would be picked up by the authorized visa officer the moment he picks up your file he would start assessing your application and would send you an ADR in form of like PCC or biometrics or MM 5669 form or in case if there have been a change in the status you definitely have to provide more information to it. So let's move dive into first case here on to the right side you should be seeing the screenshot so thank you so very much for sharing your timelines and in case if you have received any update please share through my channel so that it can reach out to huge number of applicants out there. This is just a way to help each other. So uh, she has applied on May 6th at 7.58 p.m. Central Time, which is like 8.58. Uh, so she received the TFN number uh, like on February 
second and on February 16th so it almost took her 14 days like to be precise two weeks in getting the ability to link up the application and thereafter she got the ADR for MM5604 and then uh, police uh, certificate and at the same time the payment receipt so these are the basic documents you likely to get from your visa officer so you can simply see that you know the v, uh, TFN got through on February 2nd then they uh, you know it took visa officer to almost process her application or start assessing like within two weeks time so you all could be the next all right so this is May 7th at 8 30 a.m pacific time zone so this is like may 7th under ig stream i have shared a timeline where the candidate was able to get uh you know tfn and that was of may 7th at 11 45 a.m eastern time zone so this is 11 30 a.m eastern time zone where uh just has got the tfn number on february 9th and it took almost like a week time period to link up the application or and that was like today so he's likely to get uh AOR or ADR very soon. So this could be you. <laughs> okay. Uh, another timeline is on the right side. You can see the screenshot. So uh, he has applied on May 6th at 9.25 p.m. Mountain Time. So it was like 11.25 Eastern Time Zone. Now you see here that uh, he was able to link up the application on January 7th. So a, a week prior to that, when he got the AOR. In this case, there was an ADR for IMM 5669 form and he submitted it without the signature. So when IRCC would be asking to submit the document with signature, just make sure you follow the instructions. Now, in case if they are asking you to do it with PCC, please don't sign on the front page. Just type it on a plain sheet and then scan it with the PCC. I hope I'm not getting you confused. So all you have to do is just sign and uh, write down your UCI number and your uh, you know application number on the blank sheet and then attach it with the PCC and then scan it and forward it to a uh, visa officer. In this case, he uh, you know he was able to get the ECOPR that was day before. So yeah, and since he was not able to make the complete signature, he was again asked to redo it. And uh, yeah, that's all. Another timeline is uh, May 6th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time zone. Now he has some questions and I'm going to solve it for you so that it could help you too. Uh, he's got the ADR for Diploma Letter of Employment on February 16th. Now he has been working under multiple job profiles. Now let me remind you, this is not a stream A or stream B where you have to have an experience under specific NOC uh, for five, you know, for last uh, six, three years time period, and you have to demonstrate 1,560 hours or something like that. This is plain IG stream where there was no such situation. So in this case, let's dive into his case. He asked, he said that he got the ADR for diploma and letter of employment. Now, uh, Gurmin, that if you're watching this, yeah, you can pay attention out here. So in this case, since you have worked uh, different job then you know September started working somewhere else and then January 4th you left the job and then you didn't work anywhere then few days ago you submitted the letter of employment for your first job and then second job now they have requested an original and recent letter of employment in ADR so he's not working at the moment so what uh, he's asking like do I need to submit the second job letter or what so in this case whatever you have done so for say you're working you know at, at a profile uh, in September so you can submit the same copy what you did actually so it said submit the first job copy and the second job copy and with the LOE so explain that this is the time period where you were working this is exactly you were not working just explain that in detail in the letter and that is called LOE letter of explanation and sign it at the bottom so it has to be addressed to the visa officer and with the immigration department and subject has to be you know the adr request for the adr for diploma and letter of employment so attach it with all your job letters and yeah in one go scan it and forward it to you i hope this makes sense so just make sure that whenever ircc visa officer is asking you for any document even if you have that document available, don't forget to attach an LOE. That would give a complete explanation for your case and it will become more easier for a visa officer to understand through the history of what's going on. 
Moving on to another timeline, he has applied on June 7th, BIL was on February 15th and then the application was linked on February 15th itself. This is a stream B case, so there are candidates who are still in uh, Maypool and they have not been able to receive any feedback from IRCC. But again, as I said, don't need to worry about any such thing. It's just a matter of time. Okay, this is interesting case because this candidate has applied on May 6th at 1, 1 p.m. Mountain Time, which is 3, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. So he has applied as an individual, like a single applicant. And thereafter, he traveled to his home country during the time when he was not able to receive any confirmation or response from IRCC. After that, when he came back, he received the AOR uh, that was on November 16th. There was another ADR attached to it for family background. Now at this stage, <clears throat> in case if you have not received an ADR and you have to update the information, make sure you do it proactively after receiving the AOR. Now in this case, he was asked to submit the uh, proof of uh, relationship, like proof of marriage. Since in the family background form, he had added the information for his spouse. It's very easy. Don't need to get panicked that if your file would get rejected or something of that sort, that is not legal. This will never happen. In case if you get married, you're blessed with a baby, that will not happen. Uh, now, this remind me of my case itself. When I applied for Canada in 2014, I, you know, I got pregnant with my second child. So I took a call. I returned my own medicals. Uh, you know, I did not went through, like I didn't go through the x-rays and I did went to visa officer in um, uh, Delhi at CHC and asked for my own passports. And, and you know, I'm from this uh, immigration background. So a lot of my seniors were saying that don't do that your case might get rejected but don't have to listen to all those voices because you know getting through an x-ray while you're pregnant is dangerous for the baby so i considered it and i took a call that i wanted my child to be born in india and then he was when he was six months I came here on PR. So this is all okay in case if you don't want uh, certain things. So that, that's the only thing you have to do is just update this information to IRCC at a given time. So in this case, uh, he submitted the form for spouse and the biometrics were requested. And after that, it was all through and he got the ECOP. Yeah, that was on February 15th. Really happy for this case. Okay, <clears throat> another timeline uh, is of May 7th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time Zone where uh, he got the AOR on February 15th and then there was an ADR for Police Clearance Certificate and Biometrics. So this was all done on February 15th itself. Now, as I said that, let's move on to our update out here. So this was all for the TR to PR timelines in this case you can i'm going to share the link in the description box below now let me remind you guys you don't have to get panic in case if there are different voices you're hearing uh processing time for federal skill worker program would definitely be exceeded by 36 months or maybe more right now the focus is to achieve the number what the ircc has in mind 400 and 31,000. It's a huge number. So based upon current scenario, they have a backlog of 75,000 application as on February 16, 2022. And IRCC would definitely be getting back to all those cases who have applied under CEC, Federal Skill Worker Programs, PNP quota, and business class. And you know, there are little, little, or, or, or there are different kind of immigration programs IRCC is running. So this number has to be achieved from the backlog it doesn't mean that they are they're not come up with any other immigration programs it's a matter of time based upon what uh, it would take for them to achieve this magical number of 431,000, they will come up with different immigration programs but as of now if you see that 76,000 is under federal skill worker program and if we go back under tr to pr pathway it's just that 20,000 were being a process approximately then uh, we are looking at a huge number of around uh, you know uh, 50 to 60 thousand a uh, lot of you have got the AOR the PR confirmation portal is there so we are not counting any definite number out here so all I, I would recommend you there's a possibility you know that uh, IRCC would 
resume back uh, to these applications like under federal skill worker programs by July 2022. So for the upcoming months or upcoming weeks, we can definitely uh, sniff that there is a possibility of getting the draws under PNP category or maybe for CEC. So time will tell the whole truth. Uh, right now, we can just only make the assumptions as uh, as all of you can. So nobody know exactly the fact except these immigration department. So I will keep you posted through my channel whatsoever is. Only thing uh, I would recommend in case if you are uh, in under federal skill worker program, don't need to lose hope because they're going to get back to you uh, in any ways. It's just a matter of time. Okay, this was all from me. Uh, I hope this has been little help to you guys. And in case if it does, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates. Till then, take care and stay safe.